This 5x3 single car garage has been home of my eBay business for the last two years. Last year we were able to achieve over $130,000 in sales, selling close to 4,000 items throughout the year. We currently house over 1,600 items from DVDs to video games, shoes, clothes, hats, which are all available for purchase on eBay. We list our inventory in here and we ship our sales from here. And in this video today, I wanna to take you through some of those items that have been able to sell for us recently, as well as show you guys some of the items that we're picking up that I believe will go on to sell for some really good money. Um, the numbers over here, we are sitting on the 15th of the month, the 15th of April, we are sitting on $5,000. So that tells me in a 30 day month that we're on track to hit about 10,100. Um, so what we are is $300 actually behind schedule for the 366 that we need per day. Halfway through the month, that is 100% achievable to catch up to. We have got 10 items to show you in this video. I went out to the flea market yesterday and I bought quite a number of really good items. So I'm gonna take you through that after we do the what's sold. Um, but we're gonna take you through 10 sales that came through from this weekend that you, Courtney, are about to ship off. First one of the day for these men's New Balance. What ones are these? 515 sneakers. Huge size, they're a size 13. Yeah, men's 13. Um, do you remember where you brought them? Not 100% sure, but I love the fact that they're in great condition, yeah? Yeah. That's why they've turned around pretty pretty fast. Pretty quick, yeah. $40 sale price and that. They'll go into a medium satchel, so be like 11. <laughs> yeah, I think it's about 12. Yeah. 10, 10 to 12, depending on where it goes in Australia. Yeah. Um, what do you think of these shoes from an aesthetic, steezy point of view? Yeah, I don't mind them. They're a very in thing at the moment, these newies. I feel like them with like baggy jeans is like a thing at the moment. Is it a, a UK look, do you reckon? Yeah. No? It's a, it's a gold case look at the moment. They're popular. Yeah. But I like the colour tone. Yeah, they sell well, the New Balance, and these sort of... Mm. I don't even know how you describe them, but whatever. These New Balance do really well. Now, I didn't think this would take too long to sell because this is a really cool item. We've got a Star Wars edition of the Xbox 360 Slim console. Um, doesn't work. The DVD drive doesn't work, so it doesn't recognize DVD playback, basically, is what I've been told about this device. That was enough for me to go, you know what, let's just sell it off for parts not working. Um, we'll say it's been untested as well. And if it was new and in working condition, it would be around $250 pre-owned, maybe even 300. This is quite a rare device, this Star Wars edition. Um, we got $110 for it though, which I was actually really quite happy with because it came in a bulk buy. And it gave me the confidence, because this one came in on Saturday, I think it was, it gave me the confidence at the flea market to actually end up buying a few PlayStation consoles. I've got limited footage, which I'll be showing you guys a little bit later when we get into the flea market stuff. But as a bit of a, a bit of an early look, a bit of an early sneak peek for what's to come later in this video, we've got actually six consoles because I listed one of these Xbox Originals up yesterday, and I got them off Jack's Oz Treasure Hunters, really good mate of mine. Um, he didn't want to deal with the consoles. I don't mind dealing with consoles because it's a really good high average sale price type item, and we do have quite a few of them. Um, but we've got a number here that we're just going to be selling as pre-owned, not working, untested. For parts um, because we just don't have any of the cables and they do still sell so don't be afraid to list it up with complete transparency complete honesty that you just not tested them you don't have the cables because there's some smart people out there that know how to fix them and you can still get about 70 odd dollars for them in pre-owned condition i'm selling this one over here for 70 bucks this is the sixth one that i was talking about it's this xbox original this is all we know about it we just know that it's a console, we don't know if it's tested or working, and we have no cables. So, I'm listing this up for $75. <clears throat> and we got it off Jack's for about like $8 to $10 on average, because we paid $70 for everything. So, even if things aren't working, you can still get them sold on eBay. And that Star Wars console is a perfect example. All right, the next one is this Ash vs. Evil Dead, complete series one to three, which we actually purchased last week. Was it? I can't remember what day it was. Um, so Only last week, though. Wasn't it like two for one or something? It was like cheap too. I think we paid, I think we paid like five or six dollars. Yeah. 
two dollars each yeah and then 35 dollars sale price for those they'll go into a small satchel so very good turnaround time yeah, some great comps on Ash vs Evil Dead. So yeah. we, were, we were pretty confident when we found it that it would go on to sell well. I think we might have even touched on that in the vlog. Yeah. Um, but 16 to 35, that one would have only just come into the store because that store that we bought from has got a lot of dead DVDs that have sat around for a long time. Yeah. And that was one that was sitting fresh on top. So if it wasn't us, it was going to be someone else. But the good thing about this show is that it's only three seasons for a complete series set. Yeah. So the fact that we found all three in store, we remember we were digging. Yeah. We were digging to find one season three or two. Two, yeah. And by doing some digging, we actually found it. I think season two on its own was 20. Yeah, you can yeah. sell them individually for those that do comp like that. Yeah. But yeah, Ash vs Evil Dead, definitely one to look for. Now, a job that Courtney and I are thinking about doing is condensing our hats mm. and potentially even saying goodbye to the hat category. Yeah. Aren't we? Unless you get a really rare one. Yeah, unless it's a... Store. Billabong corduroy for 250 bucks. Yeah. Um, we, we're thinking about saying no to the hats, which hurts me so much because you guys know how much I love my hats. Uh, and we do have quite a number of them as well. We've got a lot of inventory, a lot of real estate in this small garage in ultimately $25 average sale price items. Yeah. And Courtney and I, for the last four to five months, have been ruthless around low ticketed stock that we have here. And I did a call in December of the hats, and I think 20 and below. We like, even had a bunch of those too. It was a, yeah. like it was a tub full One of tub. like, yeah, yeah, that was sub $20 items. Yeah. And that was because we had a couple of price drops in there that caused it to fall below that. Mm -hmm. um, but this hat here, I think, sold for 25 I like that hat. Mizuno, yeah. yeah. Um, 25 bucks. Yeah. I think we got for that. So it was still put into a box. It's not an issue from a sense of shipment. You have to put them into boxes to protect the brim. Um, I don't like putting them in satchels. I never have. But it's not about the shipment of it, it's more about the fact that you don't really get too much more than $30 at most for hats. Mm. Um, at least the hats that we commonly purchase. But mm. we are potentially going to be looking to condense out of the category. I don't know how we get rid of these in bulk. It's not something you can just do, you know, do bundles of. Yeah. And there's no one out there readily looking to buy these sorts of hats as well. So it could be kind of a tough sell-off. And that's I think why it's still sitting up there. Um, we are also going to try and condense out of little tiny $15 action figures that we've got hiding in here. We've actually got a tub. Courtney and I, just it just dawned on us today that we never did anything about these wrestling figures. There's a bunch of wrestling figures in there that we've had for 14 months. Yeah. Um, we bought all of those in February last year, so it's been 14 months. <coughs> and... I said to Courtney, if we're going to be doing this cull and this condensement and this increase in higher average sale price, that is a great one that we can sell off for maybe $5 a, uh, a figure. Mm. Um, it could be like 30 figures in there. It could be like a $150 sale. And we can, and we can basically create ourselves a brand new tub. Yeah. And we can fill it up with DVDs or video games or whatever the case may be. So finding the stuff that's lowly listed in your store and trying to get rid of it to create real estate to make better decisions in the future is something that we're very much thinking about on a daily basis. Mm. And we've been doing it for the last few months as well to good success because our store average sits at $33 now for the 1,600 items that we've got in store. And last year that was $28. So a lot of work to get us from 28 to 33. But our average sale price now sits at for the year 37. Mm. So there's still a $4 discrepancy there from what's selling to what's, uh, what's in store. So that tells me that we can get rid of things like this, which will increase the listing value that we've got for our active listings, and we'll start to increase even further our average sale price, because we won't be getting sales like this that keep it low at the 37 point. And it's also things like this, condensing stuff like action figures, that gives us a higher average sale price. So while we've done a lot of work to try and increase this average, We've still got a lot more work to do based on what I can see here with stock like this. Mm. Seasons one to three. Not a crazy sale, this one. $19 for that. Not complete. Not complete. What is complete? I feel like there's heaps of them. I, th I actually think there's five seasons. I could be oh, wrong. Okay, yeah. But five would be complete, and I think it's worth about 40 to 50 if you had them all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's one of those ones where it's just a cheap $10 sale. Yeah. Probably not something we'd bother to list up. No, no. You do the complete, but not 
anything below. Not partial. Yeah. But, but still, another sale, 19 bucks. It gets us a, a lower average sale price item out of the store. Yeah, yeah. Which is a good win too. Small satchel. Easy to ship. Yeah, yeah. This was the best sale from the weekend though. I was quite quite shocked actually. You don't you don't often get a big bulk allocation of DVDs or any any product for that matter that comes through like this. At least we don't get it very often. Um, $215 worth of value in all of these DVDs. And what you'll notice is they're almost complete sets mm. and they're box sets. So the newsroom, I believe that's a three season TV show. Oh no. Um, you can keep your cupping away. <laughs> uh, Blue Blood sold for about $75. That is a monster wow. TV show, Blue Bloods. Um, this is a bit of anime, dot hack sign. Um, there's six different versions or volumes of that one there. Um, so that came through with the same purchase. The complete series of Prison Break in a box set. And David Attenborough, Life on Land. Can you do a David Attenborough accent? Yogurt. <laughs> Yogurt. <laughs> it's English. I don't know. He's no, British. He's, yeah, but he's like, he'd be like, here we are. Oh, I can't. He's quite old. I can't. Here we are <laughs> in the eBay cave. <laughs> Life on eBay. A lot of mysterious stock found in <laughs> thrift stores. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty bad. <laughs> that might not make the edit. <laughs> no, we might be cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, what I wanted to say around that was. <laughs> Bulk. This is what sells in DVDs today. Mm -hmm. Gone are the season one of a TV show like we used to do. Mm. That just doesn't happen anymore. Reason being is we had an increase in postage costs recently. And then a couple of months prior to that, there was another increase in postage costs. And then a few months prior to that, there was also an increased postage cost. So it kind of killed out the cheap DVDs mm. uh, because the postage costs just basically ran through all of the profit. Um, and that's just made us slightly change the way we've done our DVDs, which was 50% of what we sell. And we've kind of changed the narrative around what our, our main selling category is because of the video games we've kind of swapped to. And I think the postage costs had a large determination around the way that we're now focusing on this more heavily. Because um, we can do big bulk allocations, we can do $20 to $30 games more frequently. Mm. And we can find these now only, which is complete series or almost complete series because people are out there looking for it and we can still profit on it. The next one here. What is that? This is, I actually listed this, but I've already forgotten what it is. Um, it's a Skylanders Trap Team Traptanium Portal Base for Xbox 360. Goodness me. That's what it is. Sold for $35. Sold the same day we listed it. So very, very quick. I don't know, do you reckon we underpriced it? I don't think so, based on the comps. Yeah. I think it was selling for 35 and we listed it for 35 and it went. This one must be a bit rare. Um, but yeah, that will go into a box as well. Mm. Where did you buy these from? Because you had a few. Yeah, we've still got a few more down here, to be honest. Um, we've got these base plate things for the Skylanders on Xbox 360. We've got these Skylander mm. Giants. If you can find the loose Skylander action figures, they can do pretty well in a bulk bundle. Yeah, they do. Skylanders do actually quite well. Yeah. And this was just another part of it, which the first time I've actually sold one of these, mm. even come across one. Yeah. But $35 is a pretty decent sale price. That'll ship for about $8.50 with the Band 5 Australia Post. Yeah. Um, discount that we've got. Yeah. So there's 10. There mm. were another five, I think, or six or seven odd items that we're not going to bother to show because they're nothing too yeah. indifferent to what you've already seen there. Yeah. Um, and while Courtney does the post, let's jump into the flea market. I bought some good stuff that I want to show everybody, so we'll dive in there now. Look at them all. You've never seen it like this. How much on the games? I think I got five dollars. Oh, you got the tags on them? Yeah, loads. No worries. I'll take oh. that one. I've got a fifty dollar note. Is that an issue? No. No? Nothing's ever an issue. Oh, please pleased to hear it. Please to hear it. <laughs> Look at Rebel. Rebel. Yeah. Look at these. Okay. 
remember it? You don't remember. Do you remember it? Uh, that's, those are men's, these are men's, uh, these were, yeah, these are all ladies. Ladies are nice. These are, these are both, these are amazing boots. Dakota? Mate, they are. They I haven't are, heard of a Dakota boot. Unbelievable. Are boots. they? Interesting. They're pretty expensive too, if you go buy them here. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, it's, even the Solomons, yeah. It's good quality shoes here. Yeah, there are. Would you uh, 10 on these? I'll do 10 for you. Okay, let's do it. I'll do these for 20. Good. What do I have on them? Yeah. Yeah. Really good shoes, these ones. Look at these. Presto, size 11. How much are the shoes, guys? Tens? No worries. I'll take those two. Just had um DVD as well there. Oh, oh I don't know. Making an offer, I don't know. Uh, seven all up. That's fine. No worries. Thank you. Much appreciated. Wonderful. Ta. That is awesome. Mate, you've always got to tip the busker. Where is the busker? Right over there, she's not ready yet. I've got, I've got the five dollar note ready. You're gonna give her a fiver. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I haven't played yet. There you go. You're on YouTube too. Yeah. Have you got a shout out? Have you got like um like a YouTube or a um, Instagram? I've got an Instagram. Music Instagram? Yeah. What's that one? Um Bell Rose Noah. I'll add it. Bell, Bell Rose Bell Noah. Rose. Hey. B E L L E. Yeah. Very talented. Done. Well. It's my music Instagram. Done. I'll get I'll get a bunch of followers. Oh, yeah. No worries. Thank you. See ya. Yeah. Yeah. You can risk anyone too much of them. Nah. It's twelve anyway. Is it? Also, I don't know if they're probably back now. They've been here. I came in at six. So seven o'clock, that's been for nine minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah so. Been there for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they look like your size. Just the, they're being re glued or something. Yeah. I think with something like that, it's always best to err on the side of caution. Shoes had uh, definitely been glued, so condition is obviously the biggest concern there. And then helmets, pre owned helmets, there's a lot of regulations around safety, and you don't know if it's been in an accident before, and the helmet's sort of slightly out of whack. So. I just prefer to step away from that and not sell it. As much as it was Harley Davidson, which is a great brand, um, those are sorts of things that you don't want to get caught up in. So, happy to leave those ones behind. So what about all the consoles? Uh, we $20, but we don't have any cords. Gotcha. So, they're not Tesla. Oh, so they're not. I thought they were faulty. No, just not Tesla. Do you know if these work at all? Well, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Is there any um, remote for this one? And um, it's... That's so much for that one, no. Just okay. as is. Yes, I don't think there's so much for that one. Because that, that one's the Blu-ray, isn't it? This, I thought this was. That's the DVD, I think. Ah. This is Blu-ray. I'm not, it's my daughter's, so I actually don't know, but I do know they work. Yeah, no worries. How much? What are you looking at? 20 for both. What would be your best price on that? Um, what's he got on them? Tens. Ten each? Yeah. He said it'll go 20, 25? 20. 20. I'll do 20. 20. Yeah? There you go. Lovely. So Courtney and I, we went to Steve Bartlett last night. In Brisbane. It was in Brisbane and it was three hours long. 
I know, it was a late one. It was an eight o'clock start, which is already quite late because I'm a bit of a grandpa. Yeah. Um, and it went to 11 and we got home at midnight. Yeah. Um, but it was really, really worthwhile going. It was amazing. I'm so a lot glad. Of info. I'm so glad we got the tickets. But he, he said a few things that we wrote down. We, we turned up with notes. We basically were just writing in our phone a bunch of different things. And there's so many different things that we've covered. But there was one really big standout. Confidence follows action. Which I feel like people, and I, I feel like this, feel like you need to have the confidence before you action something. Mm. But the way he put it is just like so opposite to that. Complete that opposite. follows an action. Yeah. And if I think about when I first started YouTube mm. and eBay, I didn't know anything about eBay or YouTube. I just, yeah. I just started. I just made the first video and I just sold the first item, found the first item. Mm -hmm. I just made that first step and then from there it gave me the confidence to go, okay, that's great, let's get another one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's so relevant for any eBay seller out there or anybody that wants to get into selling on eBay. Confidence comes from the actions that you take. It doesn't come before it. Yeah. Um, so you've got to dive into just giving things a go and if you're already in the game and you're starting selling on eBay already, there might be some other things that you're not confident about and that might be jumping into a new category mm. or not knowing how to ship a certain item because of how heavy it might be and that could be an issue with regards to the postage costs. Mm. I know there's a lot of people that watch that are thinking about doing this and mm. this is the way to get started is to just give it a go and you build your confidence from then on and before you know it, you're years down the track and you might be full-time, you might be part-time but things are hopefully going to be, well, it should be rolling a whole lot smoother for you just through your actions that you're taking. Yeah. But you've had a big day, Courtney. Monday. Monday's always, yeah, Monday's always a pretty big day in here. Yeah. Um, has listed all of the stock from the flea market. So we've got the Prestos there. That's done. She's listed all of the consoles. They were about 60 odd each, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The, oh. the Xbox original was a bit more. A little bit more, yeah. yeah. I, I did that one for 75. Yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and we're at a point where we found about $900 in value because I did about 500 yesterday mm -hmm. um, of the other remaining items that were found. So it was actually quite a successful day yesterday, about $1,000 in total. Mm. Um, before, I think what I'd like to do now is just have a chat about one more topic from last night Yeah. that might help the resellers out there. So we'll set the camera up and have a quick chat. All right, so this one was one that we actually both wrote down um, in our notes. Yeah. And it was to celebrate the one percenters. So Stephen has a really unique approach to the one percent where it can be as small as changing like an air freshener in the office by one of his staff members. And he will celebrate that like the biggest deal in the world mm. because it's something that he doesn't have to focus on. It just automatically happens, but it means that everything moving forward is streamlined and as it should be. There's no, oh, we need to go and quickly do that. It just happens. Mm. Um, so, so having the self-discipline to do the little things that are so easy to do, but yet we often choose not to do them. Because they're so easy not to do as well. Mm. So he's, he's sort of saying that if there's anything to do with your business or life that you could just immediately just go in action, those little one percenters will compound into a very successful setup for whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to think about that and we've tried to come up with some ways that we can implement one percenters or be conscious of one percenters mm. that we can start to, to celebrate, um, clap up, compound and see if it ultimately has success for us mm. uh, by making us more efficient. Um, and one of them was the whiteboard, hey? Yeah, like our whiteboard, which you guys have seen in our vlogs. Um, even just having it like a certain colour coordination for me, like for our business, is a one percent thing that like having it updated, having it colour coordinated, makes a difference subconsciously, I reckon, to both of us. Just having it done for when Courtney turns up too. Like I know the numbers, but 1% mm. for me would just be to scrub up on the whiteboard the numbers so that when Courtney turns up to start her shift, she doesn't have to go seeking that information. Yeah. It's on the whiteboard. I've done it. It took 30 seconds. And even listings, like I put, and Matt puts how many we've listed that day. We don't need to do that because we know how many we've listed. Like it's just... It might seem like something that you don't need to do, but us putting this is how much was listed this day to reflect back on, mm. I don't know, it's a 1% thing, that makes a difference. And I don't have to ask the question, yeah. how do we go with listings today? I can just check the whiteboard and see. Yeah. That whiteboard is a big, big one. Um, and I think all you, all you guys as sellers should hopefully have a whiteboard yourself um, mm. and then just be trying to regimentally update it each and every day. Um, mm. Because it is a motivator too to see it visually. 
Um, so I've always spoken a lot about the whiteboard and the, the power of it. And like organization within like our stationery and the work top, like the desk. Mm. I don't know if that's my own little thing, but that's one percent thing that makes a difference. Just general cleanliness. Um, we've both got a thing around not having anything on the carpet. So that's a bit of a, mm -hmm. a rule. Like we like to see carpet basically. Yep. So we've got a lot of shelves. We've got a lot of storage areas. Let's yep. get it off the carpet, give it a vacuum. It's a little 1% thing, but it's nice to sort of end the day and start the day when Courtney comes in, she sees a clean workspace mm -hmm. uh, and she leaves it in a clean workspace as well. 1%. Mm. 1%. Um, Easy to do, quick to do, yeah. but has a big, big difference. And a book he said was one of his favourite books he read was called The Slight Edge. Um, I want to read it as well, but it's about the small, everyday little steps that S multiply into success. Self-disciplines. Yeah. The so even for your personal life, not just your eBay business, um, how important it is. So we're going to try and stack up a few one percenters, mm -hmm. um, recognize them when they happen mm -hmm. um, and actually like celebrate them like Stephen was doing with the air freshener that got fixed up. Yeah. Um, he said if you um, compound and stack up your one percenters and you have more one percenters than your competition, um, even though they're never seen or realised externally, they just come across with a huge impact on how, how your business presents. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was a really interesting point as well, but it was just a cool, fascinating thing to go and, go and check out. He's a hu hugely successful person. Yeah. Uh, we took a lot more out of it than the two talking points that we've come up with in today's video. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, um, that's it, it, motivation, I reckon, after, after listening to him to keep, mm -hmm. to keep plugging away. So... Big Monday. If you missed last Monday's vlog, very, very similar style of video. It's right here. Courtney, thanks for your help today. Yeah. See you on Wednesday. See you then.